What's going on guys, it's Hi with the Upper Life USA, and if all goes as planned, by the time that you see this video, I will be in Vietnam for the next couple of weeks. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I'm bringing along with me in terms of photographic gear, so you have some sense of what's to come in the near future. Let's first talk about the cameras that I'll be bringing on this trip. For this trip, I'm only planning on bringing two bodies and two lenses, one for film and one for digital. For film, I am bringing my Leica M6 Dragon 2000 with a Zeiss Planar 50mm f2 lens. Since I am shooting film, we of course have to look at the film stocks that I am bringing along. These are my 35mm film cases and each one of them holds 10 rolls of film. The way that I have these cases set up is that red pretty much holds my beater film, the stuff that I can shoot on a day to day basis, the cheap stuff that I don't really care about. Yellow on the other hand holds all of my individual rolls. The stuff that's a little bit more expensive and I don't really have too much of, it's the stuff that I really only shoot once in a while. First let's go through the red case because that's pretty easy. As of right now there's only two different film stocks within this case. First is Fujifilm C200 and the other is Kodak Ultramax 400. Like I said, this is the cheap stuff when considering C41 color films. I buy each of these in packs of 10 and they generally cost around 30 bucks, so about $3 per roll. This yellow case is a little bit more interesting, so let's unload it and see what I am bringing along. The case is currently organized from left to right in terms of film speed from slow to fast and C41 and black and white film. The first three films are color C41 films, Portrait 160, Portrait 800, and of course, Fujifilm Pro 400H. From here we have black and white film starting with Ilford Pan F, Ilford Delta 100, Ilford FV4, Kodak T-Max 100, JCH Street Pan, Camera 400, and last but not least, Arista EDU 400. I don't know if you were paying attention as I was going through these film stocks, but it's pretty apparent that I'm doubling down on slow speed films around the 100 mark. And that's because I'm going to Southeast Asia heading into the summer months. So if all goes well, it should be pretty sunny and hot. That being said, I'm still a little bit nervous about loading something like Ilford Pan F. Obviously, it's a 50 speed film, so I'm going to need a lot of sunlight and for an extended amount of time or else I'm going to be shooting this thing for days. JCH Street Pan is another film that I'm pretty excited about because I haven't had the best of luck with this film in the past. I've only shot one roll prior to this one and as I was loading it into my developing tank for some reason the film just kept getting stuck into the actual reel and I just had to throw this whole thing out because I could not figure it out. Shooting these three films are going to be interesting, Delta 100, FP4, and T-Max 100. I'm currently looking for a slow speed film shoot on the daily, so whichever one comes out with the best result will likely be the one that I'm going to stick with. Kenmir 400 and Arrested EDU 400 are kind of the black sheep among the films that I've decided to take. They are of course among the cheapest black and white films on the market right now, and I'm excited to see how they fare against each other. I've used Kenmir 400 extensively in the past, but never Arrested EDU, so I'm excited to see how this one works out. We of course also have my three rolls of C41 color film in this yellow case. Portrait 160, Portrait 800, and Fuji Pro 400H. If you've been with this channel for a while, you know that I really don't shoot color film. Recently, I shot my first roll of Portrait 400 in San Francisco. When I bought that roll of Portrait 400, I actually bought it along with these three rolls of film. Like I said, I really don't shoot color film, so I'm pretty excited to try these out in the more colorful portions of Vietnam. Like I said, these are the film stocks that I really shoot and some of them I've never even shot. And I'm pretty excited to see how they work out in Vietnam. If you have any opinions on any of these film stocks, please leave it down in the comment below and tell me how you feel. For this trip, my decision to use the Leica M6 with the 50mm lens really determined what film I was going to be using because that particular camera setup, in my opinion, really locked me into a certain type of photography and that's pretty much street photography. I've had enough experience with this particular camera setup to know that I personally don't really want to use it for anything else. Street photography is what it's best for. You, you can use it for landscapes and other stuff like that, but I have other camera setups that are more optimized to do it. 
with this particular camera setup, I'm thinking that I'm really only going to be using this camera to document my travel, to, to document what I'm seeing in the streets, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Not anything super hardcore to go out and really test films and stuff like that, like I've previously done on this channel. I haven't absolutely decided yet, but I'm thinking that a lot of the photography that I'm going to be doing on this trip is going to be done with my digital camera that I'm bringing, and that is, of course, the Sony a7R III. I really don't even remember the last time that I shot digital photos, so this trip is really going to be a change-up for me. I've been shooting film exclusively for a while now, and I personally feel that it's really hindering my creativity because when I shoot film on this channel, it's... It's for a particular audience and it's for a particular reason. It's really not what I'm completely used to. I mean, like, I, I do a lot of street photography, but the videos that I shoot, it's really, it's really narrow and it's really focused on one particular aspect of film. And like I said, it's kind of holding me back. I haven't been able to do a lot of the landscapes and really long exposure, astrophotography, stuff that I'm used to. And I kind of miss it. So I want to shoot digital for at least a little bit to see how I feel. Like I said, this video is meant to give you some sense of what's to come. And with what I just said, I hope you can understand what I'm getting at. I'm going to be hopefully producing more content, not only with film, but also digital photography. This means that hopefully in the near future, I will not only be bringing you content based around film photography but both digital and show you kind of like the entire aspect and the entire range of photography because I mean there's a time and a place for everything we don't have to just stick to film or digital. So I know that earlier I said that I'll only be bringing two cameras along with me and that's kind of true kind of untrue because I'll also be bringing my cell phone which has a camera on it but along with my cell phone I'll be bringing this my new Xeon Smooth 4 which is a three axis gimbal for mobile devices. This just recently came in the mail I haven't had too much time with it so I'm pretty excited to test this thing out in Vietnam to see if this setup is viable for what I'm doing for the content that I'm producing and hopefully if it works out I'll be using this a lot more for future content. So there's one more thing that I want to talk about and that is traveling by plane with film because I don't know about you but every time I've ever had to go on a plane there is security check involved and that means you put your stuff through an x-ray and they check to see if you have anything dangerous that you're planning on taking on the plane. The general concern is that as you're hitting these security checkpoints and going through these x-ray machines, your items get scanned and these x-rays are going to affect your film and pretty much expose them. There are a lot of sources giving different information on this topic. Airports would generally say that you can use their x-rays as many times as you want and the film would be no worse. The internet, on the other hand, would give you a lot of horror stories. The general consensus is that no matter what x-ray machine you go through, new or old, they will do some damage on the film and it's only a matter of time before pretty much that role is ruined. From personal experience, I've never had any problem with this, with x-ray machines from the airport ruining my rolls of film. And some rolls have gone through eight different x-rays without having any problem at development. Now that being said, I still fear that one day these x-ray machines will catch up to me and just ruin all the rolls of film that I brought on a trip and pretty much just ruin all my work from that trip. That's why for this trip, I picked this up, the Donkey Film Guard, which is essentially just a lead line bag that allows you to store your film in without it getting damaged by the x-ray machine. The particular bag that I chose to buy is the largest one that Dom K actually makes. According to the advertisement, this one holds 35 rolls of film, and I decided to go with this one because when I travel, I generally overpack when it comes to film, so it's better to be safe than sorry, better to go with the big bag than the smaller one. Now I want to repeat that I often travel by plane with film and have never had any problems with film being damaged by the x-ray machines or whatever I have to go through. I just wanted to pick up the film guard bag because it provides me with an extra sense of security because I'm bringing this film along to create content for you guys. It's a business so I want to protect that in case anything goes wrong. If you're shooting film just for fun or just don't really care if you lose your images, I would say to just not buy the bag because like I said, there's a good chance that you can get away with going through multiple airports without having any damaged film. And that is it, a big portion of what I am bringing along with me as I travel to Vietnam. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it, comment down below with any questions you may have. Don't forget to subscribe because there is going to be a lot of new content to come. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.